Tonight is April the 6th, 2019. I've got some uh, interesting toys for the uh, the audio viewer and subscriber. I've had this one, this thing right here for quite a number of years and uh, I was having a little bit of trouble with it because I was going to loan it to uh, a friend of mine. So I thought I would uh, check it out and uh, uh, I want to show you uh, what goes wrong with them. It, it's so very simple. Well, first of all, I'll show you how long I've had it. Here, here it comes with a little tray of uh, things to uh, record your audio, the performance of your ears, your name, your age, etc. I know you're not interested in my particular um, ear performance, but uh, there's my grandson. My grandson from back to 17. I was going to show you the, the oldest one in here was actually from me back in... Um, Right there, there's me when I was 56. I'm 69 now, so that was 13 years ago. And there was my hearing. Uh, the right ear is a top trace, the left ear is a bottom trace. I just made another one just a few minutes ago, and that's that's what it is now. This is the left ear. I made two different traces here. Let me get this back here. My left ear is this one. It's not a it's not a whole lot worse than 13 years. It is a little bit worse. I can't hear much over about six or seven kilohertz. And uh, here's the other ear. Oops, it's it's a little worse. But you can, uh, it's it's fun to have these things, and it's I'm really glad I, I've kept this data for all these years. This is the uh, uh, let's see what's that left. This is the right ear, so that would be the top trace. Looks like that's declined pretty seriously, huh? I don't hear I don't hear much of anything down here. My hearing is way down. Anyway, for whatever that's worth, at least that's 13 years of data I've, I've kept there. Anyway, I wanted to show you that how this thing works. The way that I check its performance, I can't actually call it calibration, but all that really goes wrong with this thing over the years that I've had it is uh, you remove this little screw right here. And this is what holds the PC boards in, and then you remove this. And inside this right here, I really don't want to take it apart again. There is a light bulb. You can see the little light bulb socket. I think it's a number 47. There's a bulb here and a bulb here. And it has a, a photo cell right here and a photo cell right there. And as that bulb gets brighter and dimmer, that controls the volume. There's a screw on the back side of this PC board you take off and then this will be removed and this will be removed. If you remove these and turn it on in the uh, out in the open, you, you'll hear a tone all the time because of this the ambient light that shines on it. But that besides, and one other thing, I remember one time the connections here got a little bit corroded and I just had to loosen them and retighten them and then of course I removed them and, and cleaned them slightly and put them back together. I mean, to, to, first of all, the test, <clears throat> if one channel quits working, you can, you can move your, uh, your left and right ear around and see if it's the channel or if it's the, uh, the headset. Anyway, that's the only thing I've ever seen go wrong with it. It's, it's very easy to work on. And you can pull the boards out using a racer on them, on the contacts, and put a little bit of, uh, you know, some kind of magic juice on them and I plug them back in and this thing has been working for me for for guaranteed 13 years. I'm going to show you how I test its performance here in just a second with some of these other meters. I just got this beauty in. I love this thing. This is such a nice piece of equipment. This is a this is a sound level meter worth having I think. It's got one C size battery inside. I'll show you how I'm going to use it in conjunction with the earphones to uh, to verify that everything's working and, and within what I call reasonable cal uh, calibration. So let me put this thing back together and I'll show you. Okay, I've got the, uh, the sound meter <clears throat> set up. As you can see, it's pretty sensitive. I've got it set up to uh, 70 dB. 70 dB would be, um, let's look down at this meter so you can see what it means. The calibrated scale yeah, that's actually pretty good. Uh, 70 dB would be zero. 
and the minus 10 dB, which would be uh, 60, would be down here at minus 10, and 10 dB more would be over here. So if this is set to 70, I've got an A weighted fast response, um, a 70 dB level signal would be right at zero, like say in a 60 or an 80. So I've got plus or minus 10 dB. And this is not what I would call calibration, but it is what I call sanity check. I mean, we can see that the meter seems to work pretty good. Now let's set it down and I'll show you what I'm doing with it. I'm just, um, I've got this instrument right here set up for a, a kilohertz at 80 dB. Well, let's set it down to 70 right there. See, some of them are yellow, some of them are red. Uh, not yellow, I'm sorry, that's not yellow. Turquoise, I guess it is, kind of a blue. And that would be, it's not, you're not supposed to get 125 hertz over, I guess, 75, over 70 dB SPL, sound pressure level. I'm sure that's what it is. Oh, uh, you buy the injury your ear, and then when you get it on the red one, you can't get it over 90 dB. And then I guess they don't want you to get 8 kilohertz over 90 dB anyway, whatever. So I'm just trying to do a sanity check. I got it on 1 kilohertz. I'll set this on 70. Okay, and I've got the uh, the meter over here set for, uh, let's zoom out just a little bit. Got the meter set over here, so after I quit talking, and I'll press the uh, blue one, which is the left ear, and, and it should read about zero. I've got the, uh, as you can see, I've got the meter not pushed in too hard or anything, but I've just got it right up against the earmuff. And there it is, there's 70. And I'll crank this, uh, I think you can still see a little bit of what I'm doing. I want you to be able to see what I'm doing at all times. Yeah, I'll crank this up to 80. Check it again. There it pegs it. It's very, very sensitive. There you go. It seems to work, and, and both channels work. Does a really good job. I'm really impressed with this little meter. Just a, just a jewel of a, an instrument. I've, I love just about everything that uh, General Radio makes, and this thing, uh, I am quite impressed with it. So anyway, I can loan it to my friend now. He's my physical therapist, and uh, let him uh, play with it, test his earring and, and his hearing and uh, whatever he might uh, choose to do to play with. I'm just playing with the instruments tonight. That's actually all I'm doing. Uh, I used this instrument right here the other day. I don't know if you've seen one of these or not. This is called a Zoom. It's a, a really nice recording unit. Let me power it up here. Got the little microphones on it and I used this to record um, violin the other day and uh, printed some harmonic profiles of the four strings I haven't made a, uh, a video of it yet. I will someday when I get around to it. This is a really nice instrument. So it's got XLR or quarter inch plugs in the bottom. It's got the two microphones built into the top. Um, wow, just, just a really nice digital recording unit. Says it's good from 20 to 20 kilohertz. It may be. Anyway, I just wanted to show you uh, this pretty little meter and, and this and, and how to repair it. It's actually quite simple, and how much my uh, hearing has deteriorated over the decades. Not too bad. At least I can still hear. I just can't hear anything above about 7 kilohertz. Now, the, the philosophy that I use here, let me turn this thing up. This thing is bothering me. The philosophy that I use here is, is to, from this to check this. Like I say, I can't call it calibration, but I can call it a sanity check. And that's the way I check most of my instruments. I don't have uh, NIST standards here, so uh, I'll show you an example of, of how I go through a sanity check sometimes in case I think there's something wrong or I want to verify that everything is right. For example, let me move the camera right here just a little bit. Let's suppose I want to verify, say, my voltmeter. Say I want to compare uh, a voltage reading from this meter this meter and then there's a little HP meter so I want to compare the uh, I want to I, I want some confidence that they're correct 
and here's another little HP meter right um, right here let's put a signal into all three of them at the same time and see if we get the same number I mean the same number obviously doesn't mean down to the third or fourth digit but then you get out your calculator and you do just a little bit of simple math and you find out how close they are to one another and if the percentage difference uh, is extremely small then you can walk away with confidence that your equipment all of your equipment maybe is, is working properly. Let me get it set up and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, I've got set up uh, this oscillator right here running into my breakout box and I've got three meters attached across it at the same time. Two of them you can see right now. One of them is this one, one of them is this one, and the other will be HP and we'll go around and and uh, look at it just a second recorded, but we're going to record the voltage 3.5093, 3.5093. This was 3.510, 3.510, and um, the HP meter. Here, let's try and zoom in on that so we can see it clearly, right. I think you can see that. Three, that's th uh, 3.5106. 3.5106. Now, they're obviously not exactly the same number, but uh, the question is, is which one is right and which one is best, and uh, how do we determine all that? Well, the way that I do it is after recording these kind of numbers, I just start doing the math. And if you take uh, 3.5093, 3.5093, divide that either way you want to do it. You can divide one on top, one on by it doesn't matter. 3.510, 3.510. You see that it's 99.99% the same, where you take the reciprocal of that. And they, they differ by, this would be percent, they differ by 0.01%. So you know what? They're correct. They're all correct. Because I don't think any of them are within any better margins than that. And let's do the last one, the uh, 3.5106. Well, it's going to be so close, 3.5106. And divide that by either one of them, 3.510. 3.510. Oh, you can you can look at it. See that one's off by 0.17%. Uh, so which one is the most accurate? We don't know. So we don't have a laboratory instrument to compare them to. But it gives you confidence that your meters and your equipment work. And that's I guess I almost call that my calibration style. Although that is not calibration. Oh yeah, here's something. Like I said, I'm just playing in it. I got something else after this I'm going to show you. Look at these guys. Now that, that is some, uh, those are some tubes, aren't they? I think they are made in the 1930s. These were sent to me by my, my good friend in Kentucky. They're 5 volt 10 amp filaments. I'm going to light them up, not right now. Uh, I don't know if I want to build an RF amplifier out of them or an audio amplifier. Wow, those are magnificent. They're made by uh, AGINT Heinz and Kaufman. They're also known as uh, Gamatron. Typical uh, plate voltage, you can look it up. They're called a 354-E. They made several different uh, models of these. The, the D and the E models were different gains, so they had different grid structures in them. These uh, typically run about 3,500 volts on the plate, just the kind of voltage I like to play with. Okay, now with that said, I want to set up one more thing that uh, I've been playing with lately that really quite surprised me, and one of the reasons I wanted that, uh, that nice uh, uh, sound level meter. Okay, what I've got set up right now <clears throat> is uh, this speaker is out of some old uh, RCA Motorola type stereo equipment from the, uh, I think around 1958, late 50s, early 60s. It's called a Golden Voice, I believe it was. 
I believe it's made by Motorola. Uh, it's got a little Weezer cone in there, I believe you can see. This is a cardboard box I got it mounted in. I know that that's a little out there, but uh, it's a, that's what it is, just a cardboard box. I just wanted something to work with. And uh, when, I, when I got to uh, measuring things on this, I was pretty impressed. Okay, let's see. We've got our... Uh, our scale set up to 80 dB. 80 dB would be the zero mark. See it's flashing up right now about minus 10, so it'll be 70 dB. I'm just reminding you again, 80, and then if it goes to 10, that'd be 90 dB. Anyway, I'm going to put some tones into it, and uh, I think you're going to be surprised at the frequency that uh, this little speaker can reproduce and that we can measure. Okay, you're obviously going to hear this one. That's a kilohertz, and I'll raise it a little bit. I'll raise it to, well, that's about as loud as it wants to go right there. I can move it in and out just a little bit to get set it right at plus 10. See how sensitive it is? You don't have to move it much to change the uh, sound pressure level from right there to, okay, so that'd be 90 dB. That's one kilohertz. Okay, let's, let's go up. I got started. Whoops, wrong way. Okay, there's, okay, let's go back to one kilohertz. One kilohertz. Look at that, it's even, it's quite a bit louder there, isn't it? Let's put it on a 90 dB scale. It's about 94 dB. That is uh, just a little over one. There's one and a half. I can still hear that at six kilohertz. Not so much, this is not about my hearing, but it, about what the, what the uh, speaker can reproduce and we can measure that I can't hear. That's six kilohertz. Seven. I don't know if you can still hear it or not. There's 10 kilohertz. Look at there. How much power that thing is putting out at 10 kilohertz. That little speaker is doing an amazing job. That's on the 100 dB scale. That's 100 dB. 100 dB of 10 kilohertz. I can't hear it. It goes to show that, that, that the frequency response of the speaker is... Mm, whatever it is, but it is putting out a very loud 10 kilohertz. Okay, I'm going to lower it back down to where something I can hear. So I can obviously hear that one. And look at the sound pressure level that actually dropped. Dropped way down. There's 90 dB, so it's, it's really close to 90 dB right there. Let's go back up to 10. There's 10. So it's actually getting louder, but I can't hear it. Okay, there's 10. Now I want to see how, how high you guys can hear it. It's at 100 kilohertz now. Nobody's going to be able to hear that, but let's go back to 10. Okay, there's 10 kilohertz. No, darn it. I can't see those numbers sometimes. Yeah, that's right. Got a little scratchy pot there, huh? That's 10 kilohertz on another scale. Hmm. I wonder why it's not so loud anymore. Well, I've got it turned up to 100. That's why. There's 94. Well, let me go back to 10 kilohertz here. Well, you know what? We've got a 600 ohm output feeding a, a 4 ohm, an 8 ohm speaker. And how it loads it and everything. I probably need a matching transformer in between it. Anyway, that's 10 kilohertz. And that's 10 kilohertz. Okay, 10. There's 12. Loud, isn't it? 100 dB. 13. Went down a little bit. Let's go all the way down. 
there's 15 kilohertz that's 92 DB wish I could hear that I don't hear a thing but the speaker can do it and look at the volume level see whoops see on 80 DB it's pegged that's so it's over 90 DB it's uh, like 95 DB that's 15 let's go all the way up to 20 there's 20 kilohertz I don't know if the meter how well the meter responds at 20 kilohertz okay well I'm going to turn the uh, the sound off that's it that says that's it's uh, 94 DB at 20 kilohertz I'm going to reduce the uh, the drive power to the speaker so you can see that it is there it is back it's actually measuring 20 kilohertz at uh, 94 DB I think that's 90 oh that's 80 84 DB 86 depending on exactly where you got it set we were shown that but the fact that uh, that these speakers can actually produce it we could measure it but I can't hear it 15 kilohertz I'm gonna start going down I mean this is a 20 kilohertz I'll just start going down 20 19 18 17 16 15 14 13 12 11 it's 10 okay now I gotta go to a different range I'm gonna go to a kilohertz here okay now we're back to 10 9 Eight, seven, six and a half. I can kind of hear that. Six. That's what I'm. Oh yeah, I can hear that. Six, five and a half, five. Actually, I can hear that really loud, and it's not near as loud on the meter. Isn't that amazing? Four. All the cats and dogs should be screaming by now. Three. Twenty-five hundred. That is amazing. The power is dropping quite a bit. That's 80 dB right there. Two. Well, it went back up. I guess some resonance is in the speaker. That's back up to 95 dB. One kilohertz. It doesn't do low frequencies really well. No use in going there. Well, this is doing nothing but wasting time and playing, but I have fun at it. So what, for whatever it's worth, hope you all uh, enjoy this. A little bit <clears throat> and uh, like seeing these old instruments let me show you how this thing is made what's inside it the way that the battery's in it you screw this thing off right here so if you can pick up one of these cheap this one was $59 see it's got one battery in it right there one C size battery I'm just really impressed with it. I tried to buy a, uh, a new one around town, but nobody in all of El Paso, none of the audio shops, the guitar shops, or any place else, sold a, uh, a sound level meter. How about that? Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have fun.